Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is going to be the second in my data structures video series of videos. So we created Node and again we're going to be using Node over and over again to represent sort of one piece of data. Okay, so when we think of Node, it's always just one piece of data. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, we'll start off with a stack. Whenever you think of a stack, think of a stack of pancakes. So what, what am I doing is I'm stacking one piece of information on top of another piece of information. Problem is, if I stack all these pieces of paper on top of each other, I can't uh, grab the bottom piece of paper. I have to grab the piece of paper on top. So the last piece of paper that I added has to be the last piece of paper that comes up. Same thing with like pancakes. A stack of pancakes, I got to eat the pancake that's on top. And that's this kind of data structure where basically a lot of pieces of data are coming through, but I have to consume them in reverse order. Okay, so last in, first out. Okay, which is actually technically how the execution of your software works. Okay, that's where stacks become really important because there's a portion of when your program's running, so like VS Code's running on my computer right now, there's a portion of the memory that's called the stack that works in this manner. Every function that's being executed and then the functions that are executed within that function, they're all being piled on top of each other. So the program is one function and then that function may run another function that gets put on top of the stack and then that function may run another function that gets put on top of the stack. And then they have to resolve and reserve order. Like that last function has to finish before the, the function that invoked it can finish and the function that invoked that can finish. So that's sort of an example of sort of like a very important and a very practical version of the stack. It's it's so basically a chain of things that has to resolve in, res in reverse order. Or if you've played Magic the Gathering, you've probably also very familiar with the stack, the idea of a stack. Um, okay, so let's create a new file. We'll call this stack.js. Okay, and I'm going to import my node because we're going to use our node throughout all of these. So const node equals require node. So this is going to be a cumulative set of videos. So you got to watch the first one, see how things build up. Dot slash uh, node. Okay, and then we create a class, class stack. Okay, and then we're going to create a constructor. Okay, and essentially, this is going to have one property here. It's also going to be called um, the data. Okay, we'll just declare and we'll just say data it starts off as an empty array. Cool. And really the constructor doesn't necessarily need to do anything. So essentially we just have the data and then what we can do is we can push things onto the stack. So push will be a method and then we take a new node. Because again, we have to put something on top of the stack of pancakes. So this is what push does, push put something at the end or at, on top. So I'm gonna push onto the stack. I'm gonna push, um, take this dot data. Okay, and dot push, push into the array. And I'm gonna push a new node. And that new node is gonna have that the data, new node. Okay. And then we're going to be able to pop, meaning we can grab something off the stack. So that always brings takes the last thing off. So I can push something on, then pop it right off. And this is sort of the standard terminology. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to return that last piece of data. So I'm going to return this data dot pop, because I'm popping the last thing on that array but that's going to return me the node and I want to access the data from the node. So it's like uh, data dot get, what did we call it in our node again? I think it was get data. Yeah. Get data. And that should return the data from that node. And there you go. We got a stack. Now we'll export the stack so we can put it in our scratch file. Module dot exports equals stack. 
cool. Okay, so I can push a node onto the uh, to the stack and then pop it off. Now let's go to my scratch file. Now we're going to const stack equals require dot slash stack. Now let's create a new stack. Const pancakes equals new stack. So we have a new stack. Okay, and then we're going to say pancakes dot push and we're going to push um, a blueberry pancake onto the stack of pancakes then we will do pancakes dot push a and here's the thing like when you use a pancake the pancake can't be used again you ate it it's gone so with the stack once you consume the thing that's on top of the stack it's gone okay it's the same way with memory like once that function resolves that function's gone off the stack Okay, so it's not like I can just keep peeking at what's on top. It's It cleans itself out. So I'll add a strawberry pancake. Pancakes. Dot push. Um, blueberry, strawberry. Let's add a chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Now let's see what happens when we so we'll console log some pops. Console.log. What do we get back when we pancake pancakes dot pop? And basically what should happen is I should get chocolate chip first, strawberry, then blueberry. So technically the result on the screen should be chocolate. Even though I added chocolate chip last, it should be the first one off because it's the pancake on the top of the stack. So as I pop, it goes chocolate chips, strawberry, blueberry, works its way backwards. So let's run node scratch.js, and there we get chocolate chips, strawberry, blueberry. Okay, so again, I'll push this code up to GitHub so you can see it if you want. Pushy uh, stack origin main. And again, this whole pushy command, that's a custom command that I made that does all the, the get things for me. Okay. Okay, and I'll see you all in the next video.